Welcome back to another episode of the Gap Down Backer podcast. Uh, we have a, a great returning guest today. Um, Coach Trot ha- has decided to come back and, and talk a little coverage with us today. Uh, Coach Trot is currently coaching in the Spring League um, with a bunch of great other amazing coaches. Uh, Coach, how are you doing? Doing great. It's been fun, and we've been here since uh, April 26. We're in uh, – this is the Crown Plaza, which is uh, – a hotel in Indianapolis. It's uh, the old train station. It's like a bunker. <laughs> Metal everywhere. You, hear, you may hear a train here in a little bit. There's a train, actually train tracks right beside us. Uh, it's been great. We've got Hal Mummy here. We've got uh, Jerry Glanville here. Um, we've played against the Air Raid. We've played against the Run and Shoot. It's like old times. <laughs> now, I mean, what, I mean... Obviously, the last time we talked, you were, I mean, you just finished up at, was East Carolina. Carolina. Um, after a successful run before that at James Madison. Um, what has it been like transitioning back? Well, it's not like essentially professional football. I, I understand it's a developmental league, but uh, not coaching college guys. What's that transition like? And, I mean, ha, I mean, how's the spring league been for you? Um, well, it's been good for me. It's it, I'm coaching with uh, – Denny Crehan's the uh, defense coordinator. Terry Shea's our head coach. Um, Eric Hicks is our D-line coach. He played 10 years for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, we only have three coaches on defense, three on offense. So this is part uh, season and part um, training camp mentality. Yeah. We're all four teams in the same hotel. Three meals a day. Practice. It's a... Uh, um, been good we've played three games we're getting ready to play three more play on thursdays and saturdays uh, this thursday we play at 10 o'clock at night so we'll get through about 1 and 1 30. okay uh, you know the games are on the fox sport uh, it's been pretty well re- uh you know it's the only game in town right now for football um, no I, I, I have to ask this how i mean obviously you're competing against each other but you're all stuck at the same hotel so how much are your staffs like interacting with each other on throwing ideas at well, we, each other? We'll eat eat meals together and stuff. See each other in the uh, lobbies. And um, Coach Crehan's son's actually coaching for uh, in Jerry Glanville's team. <laughs> um, so everybody's good. You know, it's it's, it's uh, everybody's happy to be here and, and enjoying it. And, uh, uh, some really good coaches that I've known over the years uh, are here. And uh, uh, it's interesting to, to watch how they've built their teams and run their teams and, and uh, uh, reinforces a lot of ideas that people may have or over the years. Uh, so it's been good to get back into it. When we talked last time, like I said, we hit on Robert real quickly, but to kind of refresh our audience before we get into because Coach is going to show some stuff on the board. Like I said, he was gracious enough to get downstairs and kind of one of their meeting rooms. Um, what was – because when you hear Robert coverage, there's, there's two – I mean, really, I think there's two trains of thought. Do you think some sort of variation of cover one? And you think of the old Bud Foster – well, Bud Foster gets the credit for it. The Bud Foster kind of zone to, to Robert. Um, what in, – in kind of your tree, just to kind of refresh our audience, do you, is, is Robert for you guys? Well, it's a, it's a matchup zone-type coverage. Um I was first introduced to it as a GA with um, Jimmy Dickey at North Carolina. We started running a, a form of that. And then when I got to Air Force, uh, we progressed with it. Chan Gailey was the defense coordinator for one year there before he went to the other side and <laughs> stayed on offense for the rest of his career. Um, so it sort of evolved. And so I've been doing it since uh, um, the 80s. Um, you know, it's off the four, two, five scheme, but it's a, it's a match type, uh, route read coverage with zone principles. Okay. Um, and, and I know it's evolved over the years, um, with the offenses. I remember at one point, you know, if somebody dared to get in one back, we all check cover three. Yeah. You know, it was pretty rare to see one back. Now it's rare to see two backs. Um, so it's evolved over the years. Um, 
and it's been a good coverage for us. Now it's become one of adjusting to formations like everybody's doing now. Yeah. It was our base coverage that I've used it, uh, every time I've been a defensive coordinator. Okay. So let, let's kind of talk about it. What what is kind of I mean let's let's go over the base rules of robber coverage and you can kind of show it on the board however you want. Um, how do you teach the matchups and so forth to your kids? Well, let, let me just start, and it'll be sort of like the way I teach the players. And and there are a few things that we do do differently. And and I'm just going to start out in the pro set. I know a lot of you younger coaches don't know what a pro set is. <laughs> um, and and I'm going to use the names I'm used to okay. and sort of talk about what they are. So we, we have a bandit, a safety, a rover, a weak corner, and a strong corner. We have a mic, we have a wheel. Four down line. Okay. And you can see that already. All right, so this can be a Sam linebacker for a lot of teams. Yeah. And now the, this position can be a linebacker, a safety, or a corner. So we can change the speed and size of the defense with this guy. Um, I usually put my younger players here because I can limit what techniques he has to learn. A lot of people call this the strong safety. I was always confused because he's always on the weak side. I don't know why you call him strong safety. We do it here. I've had to adjust, but <laughs> I call him a roper. I think uh, Bud calls him something else. Weak corner, strong corner. We've always flipped our corners, especially in college or high school. And it's mainly to maximize what they see. So if I'm a strong corner, I will see what most of the routes are to the wide field. In B field or boundary, but in the middle of the field, I want them to go to the strength. That's why we go strong corner, weak corner. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of it is to maximize. I, you know, and it started back years ago when people would actually do sprint outs. So this guy got all the sprint outs. He was into the boundary. <laughs> so he got a lot of the play action one-on-one -on -one routes here. He got a lot of the sprint outs and the wide field routes. But when you play left and right, then you have to show – show them both sides, Yeah. maximize what they see, and hopefully that carries on the game. Yeah. Um, we've done it two ways. We've tied these guys into the front, or we've tied them into the secondary. And, late, and we've really tied it into the secondary now. Now, we do do some one, one thing different. I number one, two, three, four, five for strength. Okay. And that's always been easier for me because instead of one, two, one, two, it gets confusing to me sometimes. Well, which two are we talking about? Well, we just count one through five. So, for example, the safety robs two, the mic robs three, the wheel robs four. That's all I have to say. Yeah. They understand what that, and we'll talk about what that technique means. Yes. Yeah. So... That's the basic look right there, what we do. Um, flat force. He, he originally was like that strong safety that everybody had on their team that, Coach, he's a great football player. He's got a uh, – he'll find the ball. He'll knock the crap out of you. He just can't play deep. <laughs> I found a couple of those. <laughs> so everybody has a team. But that's where he fits. So you can, you can adjust some of this stuff to what their personality is. So I've had guys there that weren't the smartest guys in the world, but they're good football players. Yeah. Now, if, as we get into one backs and stuff, he, he can become more of a nickel and he has to do more. Yeah. But you can limit to what he does. This is the primary robber guy. And we'll talk about what he does, but he's pretty consistent. He's always to the strong side. He always sets the rip list, strength, the passing strength. The rover has to do more than anybody else. So he's that special kid that can play in the box. He can play deep. He can play some man. But I only have to find one of them. I know some teams teach these two positions 
as the same, but I found it's it's hard to find those kind of guys. So he's he's the one that has to learn the most. Um, in some respects, this corner better be your better corner than this corner. I can protect him some. He is exposed because of the backside of the formations, play action. Sometimes yeah. he is by himself. For example, if it's three by one, he can be by himself. Yeah. Uh, the front, we still call it an eagle front. Over, under, you play either one. It's a one gap scheme. Um, you can adjust it for. The way we set it up is Rip Liz is the passing string, and then the right or left call sets the front. The linebackers okay. set the front. That can be set by various ways field call, strength call, boundary call, to the back, various ways you can set the front. Okay. So we're four man front. We actually flip flop these guys too. The interior guys? We can, yeah. Okay. This guy can be the hybrid guy. Yeah. Well, actually, it's this one if you flip it over. So you can flip it around, and he's the hybrid guy. And some of the, uh, but he would be the guy that if you flipped it around, would be the dropper in a lot of the zone blitzes. Okay. So, so that that sort of gets it started, and then and in a simple way, let me just show you. We it's really to us. A 2D type defense. So they're basically playing like a deep half. He's a flat player. He's reading two. Two goes out in the flat. He robs one. He becomes a basically a curl player. Yeah. He he drops over three and reads him. If three goes out, he slides. If four goes out, he slides. If four sits there, he's really a hook player and he's a flat player. Okay. Well, in one sense, you can say it's covered two invert. Yeah. So they're responsible for deep, flats. The, the beauty over cover two is because everybody knows in cover two, you better protect the middle of the field. Yeah. Hence, you got tamper two. Well, if this tight end runs down the field, he takes it. Yeah. So we're protected in the middle. It's nice to have invert because now... a better run force because you're an invert as opposed to being out here like a, a corner. Yeah. Now, I have a question. How do you teach that corner technique for halves? Because I, I, when I was a DC at Elgin, um, we messed around with essentially inverted cover two to a point because we, 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 we were essentially a 4-4. We were essentially a 4-4. So we, I, I pretty much used it for one game because we essentially saw one team the whole year who was in an I-pro formation. Um, and I saved it for them, and I knew that's what we were going to do, and it kind of that way I could use my free safety just to run. Um, how do you teach that corner technique? Because I always struggled with that, not knowing necessarily, because I never ran it before. Well, that's always an issue. The, the teams that do run this, we usually say inside leverage, keep a cushion. Now, we use the term mission in life. So we try to teach players, your mission in life on this play is a certain thing. His mission in life is protect the deep. Go and post. Yeah. Okay? Because he has help underneath. He shouldn't have to jump these short routes. He's got to play the deep route. So we play inside leverage as a general rule. Keep a nice cushion about five yards and play it from there. Okay. So if they do run the post, he should be inside. He will end up on the outside shoulder. Now, if you're not very good, we literally would backpedal and zone turn everything to protect it. Okay. If he's pretty good, I've told him, listen, if he goes vertical, you got him man to man deep. So there's several ways you can do it. It really depends on what this kid can do. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been in situations where we weren't very good at Air Force. We got him back at 10 yards and we zone turned it. So just <laughs> stay back there. We'll protect you underneath. And then I've had other corners that are pretty good, and we just said, you're playing inside man deep. Protect, you know, you got help underneath. 
um, you've got him in man coverage deep. So it sort of depends on who you have. Yeah. But his mission in life is to stop the deep routes. Okay. Because he may or may not have post tail. Now, some people that run this coverage, and we'll show you, play post the curl. I've always played curl the post. We've been a hard robber team. Yeah. The reason we do that is he gets very involved in the run game. Okay. So it, it's a great run defense because he's very involved. And my mo, mo, my, the most All-Americans I've had have played right here. Steve Atwater played right here. Who's uh, getting into the Hall of Fame? So I'm gonna be in Canton in August to see his thing. So Good. I'm super excited about that. And that's where Steve Atwater played. So that was in the '80s. He was pretty good at it. So you see where it sort of helps when I say you're robbing three, you're robbing four. So the basic thing, what Rob means is, if he goes vertical, you have him. If he doesn't go vertical, then if he goes out in the flat, he becomes a curl player. Yeah. Two post. The mic, if the back ran straight down the field, he has, but normally he's going to block, so he sets up over him. If he goes out in the flat, it's going to widen him to a, more of a curl. Yeah. That's all he's got to know. So number four, if he ran down the field, he covers him. If he sets up, he sets up in his hook. If he goes out there, it widens him to the curl. Pretty simple. Yeah. So as offenses progress, We've become, are they in two backs? Three by one, two by two. That's really what's become a key today. Yeah. Because now you become these kind of teams where you used to just be that kind of team. So if it's two by two, this group has several things they can do. If it's three by one, there are certain things this team does, this side does. Yeah. So that that does help us when we flip flop everybody. Okay. That makes sense. No, that makes that makes perfect sense. That like I wish I would have had this explained to me about four years ago better. <laughs> no. Let's say it's a twenty look. I assume most people know what a twenty look. Is. Yeah. Now, let let me just say this too, as a coach. I think it's really important that you teach your players football. Um I teach my players what personnel groups mean, what formation awareness means, what situational awareness means, um, and try to teach them what football, you know, what, what's important, what a 20 looks, uh, 20 personnel looks like. And, uh, and the way I sort of explain it to them, you know, every high school kid takes a foreign language. Um, most of them don't remember any of it. From my high school days yeah i said football is a foreign language too especially when guys start changing programs and systems and i said you know it's like a foreign language but you really care about this one so you better learn what it you know how coaches talk what the vocabulary is because when you're on the sideline the heat of battle when a coach tells you it's strips and they're going to throw the backside slant you better understand what that means yeah uh, or if they're going to run a uh, a counter OT, you better understand what that means. If they're going to run a power Bob O, you better understand what that means. Yeah. So, you know, approach it sort of like I'm learning a different language. We have the same thing here because we've got a lot of guys that have played. Well, I've got guys that have played at four different schools. They've seen more of the world than I have in four years because they played at four different schools. So they've had four different systems, a lot of different coaches. Uh, so, you know, anytime you go into a new situation, you got to tell those players learn our language and what we're talking. Well, about. like there's there's high schools that deal with that too, because like the high school I just left, and because I just took an OC job, um, the that senior class next year will have a th their third head coach in four years. Because sure, year, you freshman you year, place it every year. Yeah, and kid, the kids got to understand that's just part of it. But you got to learn, it, like Coach Shea says. Every coach has hot buttons. You better understand what these hot buttons, <laughs> buttons are and learn them fast. Yeah. Um, all right, so the thing that's different in the way I've taught it than most people is we put our bandit on the outside. You look most people, they're in here. Yeah. Okay. 
we like to have him out here. We like to have him up close. So if he blocks, that gets him up here fast. Yeah. Okay. And I think if you watch, that's one thing that's different than most people is we like to have this guy on outside of number two. His job is still flat for us. He has the wheel route. And he is in a forced position. He has an edge. Now, one thing I learned with Bill Parcells is you better have an edge and you better build a wall. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. So we've got to have a wall and we, everybody has to know who the edge player is. And even when you get, get to it, you get good at it. You can be watching film and who's the edge player. And the kids start to understand who's the edge player. So actually this guy becomes an alley player and is part of the wall yeah. on a, on a normal run, or he really helps inside here because he, it's either block or release for him. If he releases, it's pass. So let me tell you a little bit about what I teach him as far as a lot of my run pass reads are based on the receivers. I don't use the word triangle. I use the word picture. That's all a guy needs to see. He knows that's a pass. I don't really take read steps. We, we, we are a flat foot, 10 yards deep team. Okay. We read the picture and read him. Now the picture should alert to me what he should do. So if I see a drop back pass like this, I know he's released or he should be released. I'm anticipating releasing. Um, I use the word anticipate, never guess. Guessing is gambling. I tell kids all the time, if you see a picture of Vegas, you never see small casinos. They're always big because the house always wins. So if you want to gamble all the time, you're going to lose half, you know, most of those. So we don't gamble. We anticipate certain things. So if we see a pass look here, we anticipate he's releasing. I tell them on a, first of all, formation awareness, if it's any kind of high back, you're looking for play action pass, runner play action pass, runner play action pass. Any kind of eye scheme is runner play action pass, and I hammer that into them. So on any kind of look where it's like that, and I only say you only got to look about two steps. That is runner play action. That's all I know. And then he tells me which one it is. So if he's blocking, it's run. If he's releasing, it's play action pass. So in theory, you should never get beat. Yeah. on a play action pass because he's the final key. If he's running down the field, we cover. Okay. So that that's how we rerun pass right there. And really this guy has the probably the toughest job on some run passes for for a play action look because he's gonna be frozen to a little bit right there. He basically uses him for run pass and he blocks him it's run. If he releases, he's playing pass. Pretty simple. Um, the Mike linebackers, like I said, now we do the same thing, the whole stuff. We can stun them, move them out. He, he's got this gap. He's got this gap. Pretty standard for an over-under. Okay. Um, like I said, he's robbing three. He's robbing four. Um, flat force, flat force. Okay. That's the, the basics of, of robber coverage to me. Okay. Now, as you proceed, let me talk about the safety a little bit. We line up inside, bandits outside. He gets any kind of vertical, we're going to play high, get in position on receiver. I talk about this all the time. POR, I want position on this receiver so I can make a play. The biggest mistake these guys do is they let this receiver get even with them. And now it becomes a man technique, which I want to cheat and I want to be deeper than him so I can see through him to the ball so I can make a play. So even when I get a post, I want to be able to be on the high shoulder, see through him because quarterbacks are taught to throw on the high shoulder. I've dealt with kids that are taught to undercut everything. Now I don't understand that technique. Yeah. Okay. Obviously those coaches go to Vegas a lot. 
my experience with Vegas is usually loose. Yeah. So we try to always stay on the high shoulder because I understand that quarterbacks are taught to throw over that shoulder. So I think from a high shoulder, you can stop that throw and you can undercut that throw if you read pass. So we talk about POR. I tell them, I, I said, I, you know, I'm giving you a 10 yard head start. So we work a lot on cushion and leverage. Receiver is going to attack my cushion. I'm going to try to keep that leverage as long as I can. Keep my cushion. Any kind of cut, I'm on top of it. I had him anything vertical. Basically, anything vertical is if he's running fast at five yards. Okay. Okay. That's always a question. Well, coach, is it anything over 10 yards? What is it? Yeah. Well, over the years, kids become more – well, Coach, that was at nine and a half. Why should I – that's not mine. Um, I've also learned most kids, if you took them to Lowe's, couldn't couldn't measure wood at all. You know, they yeah. – Well, they don't shop classes anymore, Coach. That's... No, they don't. So, I wouldn't take half the players I got to Lowe's because there's no telling what they buy. So, basically, what I tell them is if they're running fast at a certain – whether it's 10 yards or five yards, if they're running fast, that's a vertical. So then you don't worry about whether it's 11 yards or eight yards. If he's running fast, he's going to go through there. Yeah. If you're going to run a 10 yard route, you're slowing down at eight, for instance. Okay. Now, once you train this guy to do this, now if he gets the flat, we're going to go rob this curl. We're going to be underneath it because the corner is going to be deep. Yeah. So we're aggressive on these plays. And the way you got to do it, we got to come over, he takes a peek. His eyes, if he sees him sitting down, he's playing the curl. If he sees him running fast, he's going to go underneath the post. Yeah. So what's very important is picture, key him, play the route first, quarterback second. So the premise of, of route reading or matches is route first, quarterback second. And then when we play zone, it's opposite. It's quarterback first, fill the route. Which is, a, if a kid can get that down, he's a pretty good player. Yeah. Here's what I've learned over the years. So I teach the route reading, routes first, quarterback second. So I catch them looking at the quarterback too much. Then they don't read the route. And then when we go to zone, I catch them looking at the routes and not not looking at the quarterback. So <laughs> over the years, most of the players that I dealt with are dyslexic. They do exactly opposite of what you teach. Yeah. So be prepared for that. So we do read the routes. He's got to read the route. He literally has to take his eyes off, see him slowing down, get in position, go rob the curl. The curl's not there. He's got to find him because a lot of times he'll go and he'll have to come back in there. If he sees him running fast. He's going to roll for the deep route. If it's a deeper route, like a sail route, we're on top of it. Yeah. If it's a post or vertical, you're on top of it. If it's a deep over, you're on top of it. If it's a bootleg, you're on top of it. So basically, anytime, anything over five yards fast, he's going to take yeah. it. Now, if he does something like that, it's your choice. Once you've taught him, if this happens, do this. If this happens, do this. You can change it during the game. So if you get a drag route, you can go rob one if that's the route you weren't about. Or we've come over and robbed the other five, made a lot of interceptions that way. You know, one time, this was the NCAA route. Yeah, the double post, yeah. Drag in post. We rock. we, I think we played Oregon twice and intercepted. I had a safety, three interceptions the same route. Yeah. In two games. They still don't know where he came from. Well, yeah, because they think because they think because of how you're lined up, the middle, the middle of the field's open. So, oh, we'll turn double to post. We'll clear those corners, and then you, they that robbing safety just go in the middle of the field because he doesn't need because two isn't threatening him at all. But you know, sometimes you would take him right to the post. Sometimes you you know there there's some team, game teams where it's something like that we would run him right there. For instance, I've always told him. If this guy if this guy pass blocks, which is very obvious what a pass block looks like, 
I've told this guy to sprint to the post because it's max protect. Yeah. So that's been one of the basic rules. Your guy pass blocks, sprint to the post, it's max protect. So once you train them, whatever this key does, he does what you tell him to do, and that can change. So that's really the premise of what Robert covered just to me. Now, let's go back, look at the formations a little bit now. So say it is 20 personnel. One, two, three, four, five. Robin him, Robin him, Robin him, flat, flat. So it's a slot. We just talked about it. He's going to read the picture. He's going to read number two. Mike linebacker, he protects us on the go route by number three. If number three goes in the flat, he looks for a new number two yeah. coming in, or he goes to the curl, basically. If four goes out there, he goes there. So I'm going to split it right there. Okay. So he, these guys worry about this side. He's going to play robber technique. He's playing inside deep. He's robbing three. He's got the flat. Yeah. Everybody's good. Now over here, it's the same thing. He's robbing four. He's a flat player. He's the deep um, man player. Now you can bring him down here. If you want to, that puts him in a better run force position in a flat position. We can put him in a hip or in the box, yeah. make it a four, three type scheme, okay. which we, over the years, it's gotten more and more that we can do that. So now if it's two backs, a lot of games, we said, if it's two backs, we're putting you in the box. Yeah. And we do the Monty Kiffin uh, version of it. Read him. Everything's based off of him. Outside, inside, cutback. He comes over here, outside, inside, cutback. So it's, it's seven in the box, and it's, it's pretty good against the run. Plus, you got him coming pretty fast, and he's still playing run, too. So it's a great run defense. So out of this loop with two backs, you put him in the box. You can put him out here in sky, force and flat. He's still got the same responsibility. And pass here, he's still got the same responsibility. He just knows in two back, I go in and play hip, bump the linebackers over, uh, or I can play sky. So there's it, you you tell him that week what you want to do. Yeah. Sometimes it might be based on the backfield set and what they're trying to do. All right, so now they go put number four out here. Now things change a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to put him covering him. Yeah. He's got a run pass conflict, which we always try to take the run pass conflict out of him. So we call it Bronco. We got it. I got it from Gary Patterson years ago because now people started going to one back. How are you going to handle You can play robber over here at one back. But how are you going to handle this side? Is that that's really essentially just the two read palm stuff, the Bronco or? Well, I've never been a big palms guy because these two have to read the same thing, and yeah, sometimes they don't read the same thing. <laughs> so yes, yeah, okay. you can do that. So basically, what happens here is he has him. He has him on certain routes. And the way I teach it is you're still the flat force player unless he goes vertical. Yeah. So I try to teach, teach everything the same. Listen, you're still the flat force player unless he does. So if he goes out in the flat, we're the flat player. If he runs a drag, you're the flat player. If he runs vertical, you run with him. Okay. Now, go along with that is he has to take any back to the flat. Yeah. 
So that that's why he's got to be a pretty good player. Yeah. Because he's got to go play this guy too. Now the other option you have is if you really don't want to do that, you cloud this over here. Yeah. Now you're playing basically quarter, quarter, half type thing. Yeah. Simple though. If you do it that way. Yeah. Try to make it simple. So you can press him, keep him deep, whatever you want to do, but that takes all the pressure off of him. And then some teams will play zone and move him out here, stun it over here, put him on that pressure. I, I, New Hampshire did it for years. I don't know how this guy did it because I kept telling our offense, just do a play action, and he can't cover that guy. Yeah. But that's been good for us right there. Oh, yeah. So two by two, he has an option playing calling cloud or uh, Bronco. Okay. And that can be a call. It can be a game plan. First thing I want to know is, can you cover that guy? We've been in situations where I would switch the corner if he's a really good player. Um, first thing I want to know is, can my ro rover cover that guy? So that's a two-by-two two look on the backside. Pretty simple. Get reps at it, you can be pretty good at it. Now, we do play outside leverage as a general rule. If he's really split wide, we can move back inside. But anything like that he should take out, he's got to be able to run with that guy right there. If it's a tight end, it's the same thing. One back. If he blocks, he's the force player. If he releases, he takes it. Goes along right here, back in the flat, and he has to take him. So he's got to be really in tune to that. Now, one thing that we did start doing was anytime he blocked, we would yell sky at the screen. So they did something like that. We would yell sky because we're letting him go. And that told him that we're playing the flat. He didn't have to run it flat. So you really didn't want to have a flat and a flat. So we tried to, that's one of the few calls that we had to make where he had to hear that. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, perfect sense, Coach. I love it. Now to the front side, we're still playing Robert. So that, that really, in a nutshell, what two by two would look like. Now everybody wants to know what three by one looks like. So you've got options. Yeah. Do a little tight first. One, two, three, four, five. And we're different. We put him out there. Safety's always inside number two. Um, now the conflict, he robs three, right? Well, three goes down the field. If you don't say anything, he has to run with it, which puts him in a conflict because he's got a gap and that guy. Now you can stun him, but we don't like that combination there. So what most people do, man coverage there, bring him over, free vertical, he takes him. This side still plays Robert. Yeah. Everybody sees that whatever you call it, solo. So that's that would be the first thing that we would do. He checks him if he goes vertical. If he goes out, then he can zone off right there. Um, he's still the force player to that side. If he goes out, he takes it. If, he, if it's empty, that's a whole different ball game. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's a standard solo adjustment. I think most. I mean, that, that I mean, that, that, that's one of the base four two five. Like everybody plays yeah. that. Uh, their strengths for some of the routes. This is really good. Obviously, that guy's got to be a good player. Um, we play another technique where that's where this guy's become maybe more of a nickel. Where what happens now, these two guys read these two guys, and you can keep him over here. Yeah. So we let these guys handle the three by one, 
Now you can do a lot of things with him. You can play cloud. You can play sky. You can put him in a box and bump the linebackers over, but that frees you up to do something different over here. Yeah. You know, a lot of one back run teams, when you do that, that's pretty hard to run against. And you can't hide it, so that's not bad. Or you just do that, or you can play half and put him man to man. There's a lot of different things you can do. Put him there, put him man, and play like two man over here. Yeah. So there's a lot, but that side takes care of itself over here. Basically, we read him, so if it goes vertical, he takes him, he takes him, we midpoint here. Now, a lot of people play this coverage and do this, and then play it like this. Yeah. We like to play him off, because if you play it this way, then he has the China or the smash route by himself. We like to play him off. So if we get a China, he plays that one and he goes there. Okay. A lot of people that, that do this say, well, we'll just take him out of the thing and we'll just play these two. Well, that's fine, but that's not usually who they throw to. And we've, we've got some good success by playing him all. Plus it hides a little bit. Yeah, especially at, at, at least at Ohio, at the high school level, you're either going to probably get like sprint out flood or they're trying to single up their best receiver backside. Most, right. mo most at least, I mean, that's especially small school high ball. I think mean, that's what you're going to you're going to get. Now, yes, there are other concepts, blah blah stick and stuff too. But like, if you're talking deep deeper concepts, it's it's a flood concept usually. And, and as a secondary coach, I think the best whenever you look at something, how are you going to handle that first, and then go from there. Yeah. I always look two by two, whatever. Who's, how are we going to handle four verticals or, or three, three, uh, three verticals here? How are you going to do it? So when we play this concept, this guy has to be able to run with him. And then basically, if either one of these, say he blocks or he goes to the flat, what happens is he, he kicks back to regular robber. He plays the flat. He robs number two. He becomes a new number. He, he just robs two. If three goes vertical, he knows he takes it. Yeah. So we try to keep it simple, but what it does is lets us play games over here. I, I just love how simple your adjustments are on it. Like, it's not anything. Well. It's simple for the. Like, simple. Yeah. And then you can hide it. If you make it complicated, they're going to screw it up. Yeah. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be very complicated. Exactly. And then just the, the simple count them one, two, three, four. So you got four. So this side, you got four. How are we gonna handle four? When four's over here, how are we gonna handle that? So we've got two ways to play it over here. We've got several ways to play it over here. So this and that's another reason why I like to flip flop. This guy worries about this. This guy again, every time I've told you so far, he's playing the same technique. Yeah. So in an ideal word, I put the young guy there and eventually put him there. Yeah. And then the older guys can play either one. Yeah. So that's three, that's a quick three by one, two by two. So let me show you another little change of strength. So on all these defenses, we say, who, who's the adjuster? Motion up to the other side. This is the adjuster. Yeah. He motions over and it becomes a rip, rip, rip call. So he becomes the flat force bandit guy and he becomes the, technically the rover. And the only guy that's got to adjust is him He's still playing the same technique, same technique. He's really playing the same technique. He's still playing what he already knows. Now it becomes one, two, three, four, five. He robs four, he robs three, he robs two. You can't make it simpler than that. And he knows that he's the adjuster. Okay. Oh, perfect, Coach. Simple. Now, I do tell him to play this defense, you got to count to five. 
<laughs> um, and sometimes it's been a mystery. I've yeah. had these guys line up on the wrong side. I said, where's two? Well, he's on the other side. So obviously you're wrong. Yeah. And so you try and make it uh, idiot proof. And then, I, you know, it's like I tell every player, every everybody goes brain dead once in a while. So if they can just remember, I got to find number two and make the rip blitz call. And if it's into the boundary, we just, he's the adjuster. Yeah. Now, from this same look, and you've got to have it in the, in the package, I think. is cover three. Okay. Now we're playing zone principles, hook curl, curl flat, hook curl, curl flat, play the post. Because some of the route, you know, one of the big routes that hurts you in uh, uh, robber is the dig post. Well, cover three takes that away. Yeah. So this is more of a change up uh, coverage for us, but you got to have it if you play robber, I think. Yeah. That's perfect, coach. So. Well, coach, I got to finish moving. So I appreciate you coming on today and 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 talking uh, robber coverage versus various formation sets and all that. Like I said. I wish I would like I said that earlier in the podcast. I, w- I wish I would have had this about four years ago when I was running the four four and trying trying to run this week eight against Waynesfield Goshen. So, well, I did read I, I saw a clinic about Alabama and they were talking about some of the same principles. Um, they have about ten more words than I do, <laughs> but uh, um, you know it's the same type thing. I think now you, you we've had to call a coverage and adjust it by formation. But the basic thing should stay there, and then you should be able to have some answers. And then when you throw in 3D or you throw in man-free, so w- when you play a three-by-one team, you got to have some answers. Yeah. But if we can make it all look the same, it could be robber, it could be man-free, it could be zone, then you got a pretty good package. Yeah. I hope it messes up you offensive coordinators a little bit because you guys have all the answers. <laughs> Discovery. Well, well, coaches, again, coaches' contact will be – information will be in the bio. Like last time, if you want to reach out to Coach, make sure you check out our sponsors and affiliates like normal. Um, and then make sure you like, share, subscribe so other coaches can find this. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated. And then that was another episode of the Gap Down Backer Podcast.